Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Okay, so tonight's episode of the Barbarian Hour, we've got the executive director for New York City Beat the Streets, former Division I head coach, coast-to-coast Division I head coach. Your first head coaching job was at Columbia, right? Correct. Brennan Buckley, welcome to the show. He was a smart guy. He was at Columbia. Then he wanted to move across the country. You and your wife moved from Manhattan. Where did you guys move from to, to uh, San, Luis, San Luis Obispo? Upper West Side of Manhattan. <laughs> you moved from Manhattan. Did you guys, you guys lived in like Avila Beach though, didn't you? Um, we lived close, uh, Shell Beach. Shell Very Beach. Close. Yeah. Oh my God. It was beautiful, man. I remember going out there right when you got the job and, uh, and uh, doing some stuff with you and <laughs> you didn't even know the lay of the land yet, man. That was the first time you and I met. Yes, that's correct. That's because I never made it to the uh, – because I think Martin or somebody came in the, the Columbia visit, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was early on. Yeah. What year did you take the Columbia head job? 2000. You were the head coach there for, what, nine years, ten years? Seven. Seven years, holy smokes. And then – so from 2000 – to 2011 you were at Columbia and then you made the move out west what year did you leave Cal Poly to come back to New York City to run beat the streets 2016 so 16 okay what was your biggest gala that you guys have had as you as the director of beat the streets I think the uh, so this is my Let's see, because we were sidelined there for a couple of years. So this nothing for two years, right, because of COVID? Well, we had one in – so we actually only missed one. Um, you guys, okay. Yeah, so this will be my sixth. And um, we – one of them in, in um, 2020, in the fall of 2020, we were supposed to – it's almost always in May. And so in May of 2020, naturally, we were shut down. And we ended up, I mean, at that time, there was so much uncertainty. How are we going to pay the bills? I think the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, we were probably had already, I think at the time we started planning it, we had received it, but there's a chance we weren't because remember there was like batches of it. And at first, like some of our peers were getting it, like, what, did we not fill it out right? Why is everybody getting funded and we're not? And in time vast majority of people that applied received it, but be that as it may, we were like really concerned. I mean, all of our, you know, this event could be like 75% of our annual operating budget. Are you serious? And, That's how oh, big yeah. that event is for you guys? Oh yeah. Oh my, and, I did not realize that. And so we're just, just very concerned. You know, I was certainly happy. We didn't have to lay off anyone or furlough anyone. Um, but that was a scary time. So anyways, we looked at doing a couple things. And I think <clears throat> there was that group. Someone ran an event in Chicago. And um, uh, they were like the first one. I don't remember it. They did it on a rooftop. They did it on a rooftop. And it was like Fight TV, wasn't it? That's, what it, was, that, that's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did a good job. I thought it was a good, really good job. And so we were kind of like, we're beat the streets and we got like, this is our thing. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta step up our game. And yeah. um, we looked at a couple different things and then I was like, that's it. We're all, we're going in, we're going for it. And no fans, um, just so much concerns about like certain States that were on the band list for New York city based airports, um, arranging COVID tests and um, hiring, they, this was a big uh, industry at that time. It was like a, a COVID, what did they call them? It was like you would hire somebody to ensure that you were demonstrating appropriate COVID. COVID compliance. COVID yes. compliance. Yes. Listen, I literally just watched the fourth <clears throat> Jackass 4.5. 
Okay. And that was their, they, they were shooting that, that one during COVID. They took like a crazy eight or 10 month break. And then they brought in COVID compliance and like the movie, a lot of it, it shows them testing. It shows them in masks. It shows them doing all this crazy stuff, right? Like Johnny Knoxville is filling up uh, balloons and condoms with all of the sewage from his van. But they're worried about <laughs> they're worried about COVID, and they were throwing them on each other. I'm like, these guys. I don't think they really cared about COVID very much. Yeah, and they and they called them COVID officers. COVID yes, no. So they officers. showed that they showed the background of that movie, and they showed them in COVID meetings, and then they were doing pranks on each other in COVID meetings. And the guys are like, I thought this was supposed to be serious, <laughs> and it's like wild because they had to bring in a whole another structure and layer similar to what you guys had to do to get your event off the ground. Right. Yeah. It How was, wild is that? How wild was, is that? It was crazy. It was expensive. And then we, we were already planning to do a lot of those things, but there was like this level of uh, comfort. You felt like we're demonstrating our commitment to being safe. And so, uh, we, and then that, that was kind of interesting. We had this like COVID, I'm sorry. We had a, um, uh, like, like a, like a telethon. You know, we patched people in. Uh, we did some on on site interviews. Helen Marulis was there. Sally Ann Roberts did a great job as our MC. Um, and then we, you know, we patched Mike Novogratz in. Um, we did uh, Jordan Burroughs and Kevin Jackson uh, and Jaden Cox, you know, talking about diversity and 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 just all the topics that were going on at that time with yeah. uh, Floyd and and so it was I mean looking back at that um, we were pretty felt um, we were very grateful we were able to pull something off like that but anyways going back to that that was uh, our last um, uh, that was 2020 so our last this is our first event in over three years Wow. Uh, the last time was in, in 2019, we had a large in-person annual benefit. So um, here we are a, a, a week, uh, a week out and um, yeah, it's, it's still challenging. I mean, it's, it's, it still has its challenges uh, as opposed to it did in, in 2019. So in 2019, it was at Hulu Theater where it's back at, <clears throat> correct? Say it again. In 2019, I believe it was at Hulu Theater at Madison Square yeah. Garden. Am, am I correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We had an incredible lineup. We sold it out. Oh, uh, that, listen. The crazy one for me was, I think it was uh, Joe Colon. Nick Soriano was an amazing match. Nick Soriano, obviously, yeah. he's from the area. Bergen Catholic's probably half hour away, right? Roughly, yeah. Yes, it's not far. That's where he picked me up, by the way. That's right. That was where I was doing that camp when you picked me up. We went and watched the concert. But um, the wildest thing about that one for me was, and I hate to bring it up, but that was when David Taylor got hurt. Yeah. How wild was that? Oh, it's just like your worst nightmare, you know? It's, it's a charity event. Um, uh, you know, all these athletes, when they step out, they're, I think, charity or not, right? Whistle blows, they're there to compete. So... Yeah, it was terrible. We, I mean, we felt horrible about it. Um, and to see, you know, knowing world championships were coming up. And, and so that was largely why um, we didn't try and host a benefit last year during the Olympic year. Yeah, and the other thing was, it's a huge punt whenever people get COVID, obviously. Now there's like long-term COVID effects and those, all these other things, you know, we're, we're constantly learning about it. Think about if somebody comes to your event and gets COVID, and gets eliminated from the Olympic Games because of it, because obviously that was a big thing looming in Tokyo. And I just want to say this. I think David Taylor recovered pretty well from the injury he got from your event, and things worked out. I'm just going to put that out there, and I hope you feel okay about it now. Yeah, I mean, we're super excited to, to have him competing next week. Um, and, uh, yeah, when he won the gold, I mean, that was that – was, that was outstanding, you know, and to know what he, you know, and to imagine the setback that he had and, uh, and then having to wait his turn. But yeah, what a, what a phenomenal run he had. 
it was unbelievable. And so he's wrestling Drew Foster. They get in a scramble. He tears his ACL. Now he's going to be back on that stage to defend his spot, right? Because he's uh, Olympic champion last year, world silver last year to Yazdani, which is, I think is a great uh, lineup. Is he got who's he going to have to defend against? I forget. I didn't look at the lineup for this. Not Nate Jackson. It's uh, uh, who's he got? Who's he got to defend against? I forget. Oh, he's got Valencia. Oh, Valencia. So he's got Zahid. Nate Jackson will have Jaden. <coughs> I hear you said, sorry. Nate Jackson will have Jaden, right? Yeah, in Oklahoma. That's in Oklahoma, though. What is your lineup, and how did, how did that go into um, picking the lineups for it, as far as what Oklahoma got, what Stillwater got, and what New York City got? Do you, do you, are you in on that at all? Yeah. Um, I think with USA Wrestling and us, we just tried to be practical, um, people that have Midwestern ties, uh, you know, naturally Dayton Fix is going to be wrestling at Oklahoma State. Um, Jordan Burroughs is now in Philadelphia. He's wrestled in our event, like, essentially every year, I believe, except for that COVID year. Um, um, Helen Marulis has wrestled in our event, uh, I think, seven times. Um, uh, Kyle Dick, New York-based. Uh, we knew, you know, Yanni you know, and qualified at that time. New York base, his weight class was here. Um, yeah, and we just we just tried to look at. I think that that was a big part of it. Is like, wh where are these people training? Where are they from? You know, where's their families from? Um, and I'm I'm sure there was probably some discussions with some of the athletes about where they wanted to compete. And we just had a conversation. And then we I work with uh, USA Wrestling. Rich Bender, Cody, um, Bill Zadig, and then I think they were doing the same thing with John Smith in Oklahoma. I was just going to say, like, Jordan Oliver, obviously. Yeah, uh, so he competes. I mean, he trains here in New Jersey, so that was one of the ones where either one would have been a good fit um, to have his weight class. But, yeah, I mean, that makes sense that he would be competing in, uh, in Stillwater. I'm glad that, that thought, like what you're saying about marketability, where somebody's <laughs> from what their ties are to the program. I'm glad that there's some of that involved in it. Cause yeah. sometimes things seem real willy nilly. You know what I mean? Like somebody, somebody's throwing a, a dart at a dartboard with some names on it. Like, I'm like, why, what is so, why is this so random? Which that makes sense though. Whenever you have boroughs, Philadelphia, New York city. Right. And, and I mean, from that, New Jersey. yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Right. Training Philadelphia from Jersey. Why, why, why ship him out to Oklahoma? And I don't think right. you're going to have a problem filling either event. I think both events are going to be bangers, in my opinion, as far as fan, fans, viewership, all that. I mean, I just I don't think you can go wrong. But I, I like that there's thought, like what you just said. I think putting thought into it and being thoughtful and marketing, obviously that's something that's important and keeping fan bases close to their athletes and where their fans are and where, you know what I mean, where the athletes are too and, you know, when you can when you can work like that, I think that that's important. So, I'm, hey, thank you. Thanks for letting me have a peek behind the curtain there. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, so we got Zahid David Taylor, right? That's that's on your guys' list. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, Yanni. Yanni's a big one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be interesting uh, uh, matchup. Um, Henderson had had quite a thrilling uh uh competition at the trials coming from behind and um yeah we're excited i mean we got uh on the greco side you got little hancock of world world bronze medalist he's a barbarian athlete i just want to put that out there giangelo hancock is a barbarian apparel athlete I'm, i mean i know listen first off world medalist obviously very super exciting guy to watch explosive <clears throat> goes for broke big athletic guy fun to watch i'm a fan I'm a huge fan, right? When you can get a guy like that, I like hearing who's who's an Oz man. That guy gets me fired up, so I'm 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 fired up. I, that makes me I'm pumped now. And he's a barbarian guy, so come on. Uh, we uh, yeah, Sarah Hildebrand, um, Helen, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a full full lineup. We're really excited about the card. It's always, it's a big deal, like right? obviously. 
we want to sell tickets. We want people to be donating, um, but we we want to run a good event, and we want the athletes to feel good. We want USA Wrestling to feel good. We want Flow Wrestling to feel good. Um, we invite all of our student athletes. All of them, we give them free admission for student athletes, coaches, parents, alumni, um, New York City wrestling community. I mean, we have. Penn State uh, uh, alumni coming, <clears throat> New Jersey, Long Island. So um, we take it seriously. We our staff is my staff is incredible. I mean, it's a very small team that's pulling this thing off. Um, board has been supportive, and um, yeah, it's been great just working on the promotions. Appreciate you having me on the show. Um, but it's, it's quite, working with MSG, I mean, they're just total pros. Um, we've done a couple walkthroughs now, and, you know, we start thinking about where, where the athletes are going to, where are they going to walk down? When is the music going to play? Where are they going to be warming up for the mats? Um, what's going on the big screens? Um, how are we going to recognize our sponsors? Um, we have student athletes who are going to speak, like two seniors, about their um, personal experience at Beat the Streets and what their future plans are um uh did, did some highlight videos with uh jeff riccio who does all our digital uh graphics that you see on instagram that guy's um, really good that guy's he's really, really good, good. Like super really talented. talented yeah like super talented has an amazing eye <clears throat> so yeah it's, it's, it's been interesting to be a part of the experience and yeah, I mean, there's people who do this full time for a living in terms of just going from event to event to event and it's, it's, it's a lot of work and um, really um, um, admire just how this thing, when you look back three months ago and you're sort of like, all these pieces are still not even connected at the time. Well, what weights are we going to get? Um, are we going to do the first session? Is that going to be X number of weights wrestling into completion? Or is everybody, what we are going to do is everyone wrestles first round, which is at 2 p.m., there's a break from say 4.30 to six, and then everybody comes back at six for round two, wrestles through, and then any of the uh, weight classes that require a third bout um, will, will uh, take place that same round. And then after that, we have an after party, um, takes place across the street at this place called Versa NYC. They have an outdoor patio. You got a view of uh, Madison Square Garden in Midtown Manhattan. Um, a guy that I know who wrestled at Columbia, who's lead singer of a pretty prominent um, jam band called Railroad Earth. Um, his name is Todd Schaefer. He's going to be performing, um, playing at the after party. Are they uh, like a, like a dead like a dead tribute? Yeah. Okay. I mean that. Judging by the name, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, they're, I mean they're they're pretty big. They do they do and that you know I don't even know what they do. They probably do some dead covers here and there, but they're they got numerous albums from New Jersey. Um, his name's Todd Schaefer. We got a bunch of, you know, Jeff did, uh, Riccio did a lot of these uh, digital posters. So we'll be off raff, raffling off a few of those, raffling off some tickets to next year's event, selling some merchandise. This is from Cliff Keen, uh, fresh off the presses today. Um, we have a, a, uh, four matches in between the two sessions, four individual bouts uh, with Beat the Streets um, New York and Beat the Streets New England. And then we have a kid who um, uh, is now at Kiski Prep who's going to be going to Columbia wrestling one of our guys who's a senior right now. Um, <clears throat> uh, what are some? Oh, we just, I mean, we got Fast Twitch coming to uh, sign autographs and do like a picture line. So, uh, we'll have AJ Ferrari. Um, oh, and it's Mr. Just, Fast Twitch is going to be in the house. Oh, uh, it's we're just just tonight. We just got word tonight. He's super guy. Just doing this to help support and promote Beat the Streets. Um, I've obviously watched him wrestle a lot, but never really chatted with him. Just great dude. Really. Can I just tell you. That I was doing the Iron Man final one year when he made it when he was at Blair and he was he was not he was he comes out of his stance and like like almost taunts people to attack him right and I was like yeah that ain't gonna work in college it worked in college yeah. it worked in college I think it's gonna keep working in college that dude's a freak mutant 
like unbelievable. Like AJ Ferrari, I mean, Mr. Fast Twitch, like, look out, man. I've seen videos of him doing like his squats and deadlifts. Like. He's a mutant. <coughs> He's a mutant. Hey, if you ever get a chance, you got to watch the interviews I do with Big AJ, his dad. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's cool. I've interviewed him a couple of times. He's a real cool guy. You know, listen, do you know their story? A little bit. So I know he was, they were in New Jersey. He yeah. Was, he's, he was at Bergen Catholic. No, but uh, no, 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 no. They, a bunch of them, like 50 of them, 50 Ferraris moved from like, I don't know what borough they moved from. They moved to like Plano, Texas. Like 50 of them just like, they were in your area where you live. And they were like, hey, let's go check Texas out. And they all like laughed. And they all like 50 of them. He told me, the dad told me, I'll just send you the interviews. It's kind of a like cool story, man. It's a neat story. They're in Stillwater now, the whole family is, but they were in Texas. Mm -hmm. not, not the 50, but like the huge mass exodus of Ferraris that left the New York City. I don't know which borough, I forget. They went down and they all moved to Texas. He's like, oh, it's cheap. It's affordable. People are nice. So he said, yeah, he like told me, he's like, like 50, seriously, like 50 Ferraris moved down. Wild, right? You didn't know that, did you? I didn't know there was that many. I mean, come on. Come on now. Come on now. You know there's got to be a lot of Ferraris, right? That's got me fired up. But listen, I just want to do the lineup real quick so people know. Yeah. Um, Tuesday, June 7th at Hulu Theater. Bro, which Wednesday, is, June 8th. I'm sorry. Why is it I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, I have the official email from USA Wrestling pulled up. It says Tuesday, June 7th, but that's pref, press conference schedule. Press conference. So, Wednesday, June 8th. Um, matchups, Britton Holmes, Kamal Bay, 77 kilos, 72 kilos, Skylar Grote, Mitt Elor, uh, Evan Henderson, Yanni Diakabahala, 65 kilos. Alan Vera, Tim Young, 87 kilos. Greco, and then 125 kilos. Hayden, Jack Freak, Zilmer versus Gwizdowski. Then they got 67 kilos. Sancho versus Nutter. 53 kilos. Women got Felicity Taylor versus Dominique Parrish. Dom Parrish. Uh, 60 kilos. Greco, Dalton Roberts versus Adisov. Women's freestyle, 62 kilos. Kayla Miracle, Jennifer Rogers, 97 kilo. My guy here, two of my guys. I'm a big fan of Braxton Amos. He'll be taking on super duper explosive freak, G'Angelo Hancock. Um, <coughs> third rave, wave of uh, weights, Sarah Hildebrandt, Melissa Lamp. Kyle Dake, Jason Knopf for 74 kilos. Helen Rulis, Alexandra Hedrick. 57 kilos women's Jordan Burroughs chance Mars dollar 79 kilos and 86 kilos. The one that I got wrong earlier, David Taylor. Well, I didn't get it wrong. I just didn't know that he was wrestling Zahid at first off the top of my head. Zahid David, that one I'm really looking forward to because I want to see the jumps that uh, Zahid's make if he, if he's at the David level yet, but we'll see. What, should, what are you fired up for? Give me something you're fired up for. Um. Certainly, uh, Taylor Valencia. Um, you know, love love watching Jordan Burroughs. Every it's just he's a staple at our event. Um, um, Helen, her technique. I just like she's just so technically sound. I just love watching her wrestle. Um, excited to have Sarah. Um, yeah, I just I love you know, stoked to have some of the Greco stars. Um, D'Angelo, Kamal. Um, I'm just excited for us to host this event. Um, we've obviously had uh, very unique matchups uh, in just some totally iconic venues in New York. Um, just that when, when we went, like South Street Seaport was fantastic, but if you remember, we had those weather challenges that were you know, quite a, that was a lot of pressure and, and, and was very concerned that the weather was going to put us out. So at that point, we made that decision, like, we, we need to go indoors. We need to be able to control that environment. And um, I had never seen a show or been to the Hulu Theater before. I think it's absolutely stunning and 
the most perfect venue for wrestling. 5,000 seats, um, the sight lines, the ceilings aren't that high. I mean, they're, all the seats, even if you're in the, in the way back, you're, you're, you've got a great view of the wrestling. Um, it just feels very intimate. And um, just the, 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 just the overall production, the lights and uh, the TVs, and it, it, just, it just was an electric atmosphere in 2019. And being able to open it up to so many fans, historically, we were only um, seating about five, 600 or so when we were in Times Square. You just don't have a plot large enough. And the other cool thing that we did when we, went to the Hulu theaters, we changed our pricing structure. So because we had so many more seats available, we just made it, we made it so much more accessible for that year tickets were as cheap as $45. This year it's uh, $65. The cool thing about this, this event this year is your ticket, you have, you purchase one ticket and you get, you get access to both sessions. So um, those tickets are available on Ticketmaster. Um, and then for those that want to go to the, the, the after party uh, at Versa, we manage all of those internally. And so that's, that comes from our people who are purchasing ticket packages. So, um, yeah, but I think to the, the, the gravity um, of, of Final X, we, we haven't had a world team trial. So this is totally new for us. Um, but I, I just think that just increases the competitiveness even more. Uh, there's a lot on the line for, for a lot of these athletes and, um, you know, to be able to represent the U S that, that's a really big deal. So, um, we're excited to be able to have final X as a platform for this year's benefit. So just beat the streets real quick. I don't think people really know what beat the streets does and what the organization is and what, you, what why you left Cal Poly to move back across the country coast, yet another coast to coast move for the Buckley's. Just tell people a little bit and inform them about what Beat the Streets is and different you know, cities, that urban areas that are there have chapters and, and what the goal and what you guys do at Beat the Streets and why your job is so important. Yeah, it's our, our, our goal is to equip the, our student athletes in two ways. Like first, via the sport of wrestling, just like the – that those learning lessons that uh, that lens with which we view the world as wrestlers is simply different than other people than other sports. Um, so we are a wrestling organization, but we're we're more we're a youth development organization. And so, on top of um, being able to have a training center and run a middle school wrestling league and sending kids to competitions and camps and clinics and supporting uh, the high schools and in New York City's athletic league um we're, we're also we identify kids that that we uh demonstrate a commitment to to beat the streets and who simply want more they want more mentorship they want more support they want they want to become better students they want to go to college they want to get a a, a job on wall street one day um and so we we bridge that gap with where they are and where they're trying to go and the reality is when you're at a public school in a, a large city like New York City and you're in the public education system, it's just simply harder. They, they just don't have resources. They're understaffed and uh, uh, under-resourced. And we're trying to put them uh, in front of role models like a, like a Jordan Burroughs, like a Helen, like a Dave, like a you know, like all these, you know, realizing like you can, you can accomplish anything if you uh if you strive to be the best and you take those lessons that you learn in wrestling and you apply it to these other avenues of life and then what, what beat the streets will do is we'll provide academic support we'll take you on college visits we will include you in a career day with our board of directors who tells you about the different industries that are available and what uh, those employers are looking for and what kind of academic strengths they can need and so um you know, the Beat the Streets benefit, um, I think for a very long time, just Beat the Streets was this event. It was this day of exciting wrestling with world-class athletes. But in time, we really tried to strengthen and control the narrative to make sure that everybody became aware that 
this is an amazing event. This where we are here to excite the wrestling community and to to partner with USA Wrestling and 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 the the, the local wrestling community. But this event it 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 pays the bills for Beat the Streets to be able to impact student athletes. So it pays our staff. Um, it's sending kids to competitions, paying for officials, camps, and clinics, and uh, food. We we feed our kids at this academy day, and we. Uh, run a career day. We take the kids bowling. We do a summer barbecue in Central Park. We we paid for kids books when they're in college. Uh, we've a coach was uh, needed help. That the school wasn't going to help send them to a competition, even if we couldn't send them. And hey, this coach has been here. These kids are committed. They come to our training center. Let's take care of them. So um, those are some of the things that we do, and. Um, we measure success by, you know, what our, where, what our kids sort of like where they were in their life at the time and then where we're trying to get them. You know, are we providing a lifelong impact? Are they becoming better students? Are they becoming better citizens? Are they going to be giving back to the wrestling community when it's their turn and they have returned to New York City after perhaps wrestling in college or landing a job? Now we have, you know, we have tons of coaches now that are Beat the Streets alumni since we've been around since 2005. So the wrestling culture in New York City is, is a, a whole lot stronger than it was when we first began. Are the chapters that have <clears throat> formed in the other major, uh, obviously, ur urban centers in the United States of America, Cleveland, um, just off the top of my head, Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago, L.A., are all of you guys loosely affiliated? How does that work? And are they, are, there's just a lot of moving parts, I get it, right? But what is the affiliation between the other major urban areas and, you know, massive metropolitan areas in the United States and Beat the Streets in New York City? Are they related? Do they closely, do they work together? Yeah, that's a great question. I think for a period of time, that the answer to that question was evolving. Um, <clears throat> New York was the first, um, then it was Philly. There might've been a number of years ago, Chicago even sort of had to beat the streets, whether they called it that or not. Um, sort of the, the New York, Philly, LA, and Chicago are the, have historically been the largest with say the largest budgets and working with the largest number of kids. But, um, the, the irony is that during the pandemic, when things were at their most challenging and it was hard to be connected to people initially, um, it was almost like this catalyst for us to really kind of connect with all the different uh, chapters all across the country. There's over a dozen now um, and say, hey, what are we like? What are you doing? Or what? Here's what we're doing. What does your board say? Like, Oh, how are you applying for this PPP? And how are what are your goals, your strategy to, to continue to impact kids? Like, what are you doing on Zoom? How are you keeping them engaged? Are they talking to their high school coaches? And so there was this vision to have what was called a million um, uh, um, a million minutes challenge. We were trying to collectively impact student athletes across the country for a sum total of, of one million minutes. And we hit it. And <clears throat> prior to the pandemic it was again it was this there is a beat the streets national right now the executive director is ben Ryder. before that it was jeff marsh and i just think like a lot of nonprofits, you're you're you have this idea this vision it's a blank canvas like what are we trying to do what, what are different strategies what makes the most sense how can we vote most efficient with our money and our resources and as that was evolving, the pandemic hit, and then it became this like, okay, let's all like kind of figure this out together. And the result has been that we're so, so much more tightly wound and connected than we were before. And so a few, a few things relative to that question is like each, 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 each city, each chapter, they have their own budget. They have their own board of directors. The mission is pretty much the same. Um, it might to be keep kids fun. off the street is like literally what the saying has been forever to keep kids off the streets, right? Yeah, I mean, it's the name says it all. Yeah. And so um, there's some standard operating procedures. 
all the coaches need to be background checked and um, we're, we're all connected uh, to USA Wrestling. Um, hey, I wanted to let you know, I just got my fingerprints <laughs> done for my school. Okay. Well, Cause you got to have a thing for USA Wrestling to be in the media pool. I'm not a felon. I wanted to let you know. Right. No felonies. I'm still, hold on. Knock down a little wood. I just want to let you know. All clean here. I'm still allowed to teach kids. I'm allowed to be in the media pool. So just running it by you, letting you know here, you know, in a public forum so people can see and you can understand that there's nothing, not that, not of these sleeves, buddy. None of these sleeves. I got nothing for you. Okay. Turns out that's important when you work with youth, people passing background checks. I don't think a lot of people get that though, Coach Buckley. I don't know if a lot of people get that. That's a thing, right? You got, oh, yeah. You, got, oh, yeah. you have to have positive mentors in people's life who can pass a background check. It's yeah, we're, everybody has to be safe, safe sports certified. Yes. Um, background. So there's that just to even start up. You have to yeah. be a 501c3. There needs to be like, there's, I think there were definitely um, a handful of cities or just different sites. Someone would pop up and they would be a beat the street site. And so the, the mission was really, well, you have to do more than just wrestling. Like there needs to be some kind of mentorship component. And so at that time, when we first started, I don't even know that we didn't really even own the, the, um, uh, the trademark for the name beat the streets. And so some board members and people at a few different cities um, purchased that. And then <clears throat> we, we had loosely some standard operating procedures. There would be a license fee for each city to pay. Again, so there's different staff, different board, different budget, work with different numbers, <clears throat> but there needs to be an off the mat component and some kind of measurement of um, uh, measuring your progress, evaluating your, your um, impact and but no I mean we I think there's there's been a pause for about a year in the transition of um, Ben taking over um, as, as executive director for Beat the Streets National their their primary mission is to um, assist a lot of these new cities like someone's like hey wait, we would get all these phone calls I want to start a new city what do I need to do Yes, it's, it's a process. And so that's one of the, the, the big, large bucket items that he's going to be doing. I believe the vision is by the 2028 Olympics, there'll be 28 new cities uh, across the U.S. That's and ambitious. So I'm on, I'm that's on ambitious. Board, I'm on the board with uh, the executive directors of various other Beat the Street cities. Um, you know, I'm good friends with Yaru Washington at uh, Beat the Streets LA. Um, um, Wasn't uh, he an assistant coach of yours? He was for several stints as the media Se guy. Several says. stints, all right. I think I frustrated him enough that he would he would leave for a period of time, and then he would he'd realize how much he missed me, and then he came back. So Yaru is in the LA chapter. LA beat the streets, correct? Yeah. Yeah. What is his role there? Same, same as mine, executive director. Oh, he's the executive director in LA. Okay. Yeah. And once again, massive areas. I mean, LA and New York City and Chicago, obviously it should make sense to everybody that they're the three biggest, right? It's, it's based <laughs> totally, off totally population well. center. It's based off people. <laughs> yeah, Philadelphia is large too. And well, they, that's they, another they huge they population them. center. Um, but we've had them. There's, there's one in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, um, yeah, Detroit, uh, D.C., uh, New England, um, uh, Baltimore. It, it's 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 really cool. I mean, it's really amazing to see you know to know that wrestling is important in in various uh, different cities across the country. Cleveland. I mean, there should be one in Cleveland. I mean, Cleveland is is the city. Of Cleveland no, Cle yeah, Cleveland. I've there. done. I've actually gone and done practices with Andy Rovat, like filmed them. Andy ran a practice, and then this elementary school is Cleveland beat the streets. It was good. Uh, I like they're they're doing a really good job in Cleveland. Um, I listen. You got a really awesome organization, right? And it's got the the biggest thing that I like always love about coming to you know New York City. It's the cultural center of Earth. You know, it is it is the heart of of human civilization to me. I'm biased. I'm American. I get it. But it, it's it's the center of it all, man. It's it's where it's happening and it's where it's going down. You know, that 2016 NCAA tournament was something really special that I loved. 
obviously being at Madison Square Garden, this being at Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. I mean, whenever you can get in the most famous, iconic arena uh, you know, on earth, right up there with the Coliseum, right? I mean, it's, it, it's, it's the most famous arena on earth next to the Coliseum, in my opinion, right? These are obviously a bunch of American biased opinions on, you know, coming from me. But anytime something's in New York City, it's so special, right? Like my kids, we live out in the country, man. We live out in the country. My kids, when I, when I take my kids to New York City for the first time, their heads, their minds, their, <laughs> their brains are going to be broken. They're going to be like, what is, ha- what is happening here? Right? Because everything is such a grand scale and it's a massive tur- tourist destination. It's the, the head of business in the United States of America as far as Wall Street, right? Like, it's an amazing place. It's unbelievable. And that's where you work every day. That's what's awesome about like when I get to talk to you, it's a big deal when you got some bumpkin like me. It's like when you watch the movies and they got some kid from Iowa and they go to Los Angeles or they go to New York and it's like all these like, you know what I mean? That's like me next week. I'm like, oh, looking around, my pocket gets picked or something, right? <laughs> right? You get, you get what I'm saying though. It's like, it's such an exciting hey, thing. I'm, I'm going to take you by the hand, buddy. Don't you worry. I'm going to have like one of those little, the, the, the cords, you know, with like a leash, you know, a leash. Yeah. like a leash. Let's yeah. just call it a leash. Let's yeah. call it that. It is. It's a leash. I'm going to have it's you on a leash. leash. I'll give you, I don't know, six to eight feet of wiggle room. <laughs> let you like a smell a hydrant. And, but you know, you're not going to get that far from me. But the going to the iconic places, like you take all these kids that you guys, they're New York city kids or five boroughs kids. Right. I don't, do you think people like, do we, do I need to explain the five boroughs to people? Do I need to do that? I think so. I think get, get a little, get a quick Okay. Little. So there's five boroughs in New York city. It's what is it? It's uh, Brooklyn, the Bronx, um, Queens, Manhattan, and Staten Island. Did I get that right one? Is that, right. Is, everybody always messes the fifth one up, right? So you service all those areas, right? So you guys create coaching opportunities. You create, um, obviously, your youth development organization for the five boroughs of New York City. Correct? Correct. Am I, am I, am I, am I, am I, you know, you got to correct me when I'm wrong here. I got you. I said, I said Tuesday, June 7th and you correct me. It's actually Wednesday, June 8th when the event is right. (laughs) But I don't think people get the, the, the actual size, the amount of people that you guys have to service and what you guys are trying to create the culture of for these kids who you say a lot of them are in the public system, right? And the public system just doesn't have what the private system has. It's just how it is. It's the haves and the have-nots. We all know that. But this organization is a special organization. And it's like, you're able to bring the kids, the student athletes from Beat the Streets will be a part of the crowd on Wednesday. That's my, I think that's my favorite thing about it. You, how you guys are able to take those kids who don't have this, you know, who don't have the same things as other kids, the same opportunities. And you're able to bring them into Madison Square Garden, Times Square the USS Intrepid, Grand Central Stations, you know, past, uh, you know, beat the streets uh, places that they've had it. Those are just the big four off the top of my head, right? It's amazing, though. It's amazing that you're able to bring kids from the five boroughs and they're going to be in Hulu Theater in Madison Square Garden. That's one of my favorite things about it. And then you got this bumpkin walking in like it's a Hollywood movie and, you know, he's like this kid from the cornfield, right? And then he's got his handler with the leash around his neck. Hey, get away from that. No, don't look in there, right? It's like uh, Will Ferrell when he shows up on Elf and he starts eating the gum and free peep shows, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what it's like for me. Though. My kids, I can't wait for my kids to see it. But it's just such a special place, right? It's the, most, it's the center of human civilization. I don't know if a lot of people are. It really there. is. I mean, and you know what's interesting is like, you know, I, I remember the the sense of fascination and wonder um, when I first moved to New York City and I was 25 years old and my grandparents uh, lived in the Bronx and both of my parents were born in the Bronx. But yet the idea of living in New York City, that it just wasn't in the cards for like, it was, it was not something like my wife is from a very small town in Iowa. So for her, it was like, I'm going to go to New York City. Like I'm going to make it in New York City. I've been to New York City a handful of times when I was young, but it, it wasn't, um, I don't know, I just didn't appreciate even just like those handful of experience I had. When I moved to New York, it was just like, 
oh my God, this place is just a game changer. I mean, your life. And, and that was how we recruited student athletes to Columbia when I was there was we had lots of kids who in a million years would, parents would never like living in New York City, that's not something you're gonna do. Why would you wanna do something like that? Or why would you not wanna have any space and your people are cramped up on you, but just the, what you're exposed to um, and just the amount of learning that goes on just every day when you wake up until the time you go to bed, it's, it's, it's staggering. And so the cool thing for me was when I left, I never, you know, I remember leaving thinking like, oh man, I'm gonna miss this place. Like, I don't think it hit me until I can vividly remember driving uh, 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 through the Lincoln Tunnel and looking back and I was like, oh my God, man, I can't believe I'm, I'm saying goodbye to this place. And then after being in California, um, yeah, I think in my mind, I was thinking, oh, it'd be great to go back one day, but it's like, you know, like be doing a do-over, like am I, um, and, and so, but the way it worked out for me, I'm just so grateful, like I got to do it again. And so I remember coming back um, in 2016, five years later, and I was like a kid in the candy store again. I mean, just this sense of amazement and gratitude and, and just like uh, the humility and it's just, just the people that you need and the experiences that you have. And, um, you know, just, it, it keeps you very grounded. You know, you are not a big man in a small pond when you're in New York. You are, you're, you're part of the, um, you're part of the ecosystem that makes it what it is, but you're, I don't care, billionaires, I don't care how successful you are, like New York will always, will always ground you because of the, the history. And um, you might think you're a big deal and the next day you run into somebody and you realize you haven't done squat. You know, this person has an amazing story. But then the more you meet is like, oh my God, I met this person from the Midwest or from this tiny town. And they came here with this idea to make it and they made it. And yeah, I could go on and on. But it's cool to hear you talk about it in the same uh, light. Nostalgia is almost how, almost how I feel about it. Because, you know, I just go so rarely, but it's your daily, right? So there's <clears> such there's such a huge spectrum there right like it's your daily i make it you know once every couple years right and i usually look forward to going I, I like going man i think it's cool um you know some iconic moments that i've seen in this beat the streets and the events you guys have put on was when when uh coleman scott won he beat bunch then he had to beat humphrey no, he beat Humphrey, then he had to beat Bunch. That's what it was. He had to <coughs> wrestle into to Bunch. That was amazing. It was, it was in Times Square, and it just that was like one of the coolest moments ever, and I was calling it. I was yelling like an idiot, and I was calling it for Flow Wrestling. That was really cool. And then, you know, um, obviously, Jordan Burroughs, Russell Godoyev, I got the I, – I don't know if I got the call that one. I forget which one I got the call. I got to call uh, Logan Stever was a young kid. I got to call some of his matches. That was cool. Uh, meeting Neil deGrasse Tyson was cool, though. Are we going to see him again? Who will we see if we're not going to see him? Could we get this guy back? Because that guy's a super. I love cool. that interview you did with him. Oh, he's the best. Super nice guy, too. We he, he went up for like 20 minutes. He went in 2019. Um, did he? Yeah. We had uh, 2019. We had. Um, Kelly Ripa was had her Instagram account and she was jokingly commenting how she was going to the Met Gala. And then you would she would pan the the mat and you would see people competing. She's like, this isn't the Met Gala. <laughs> but her son, their son, her uh, Martin, her husband, Mark Consuelos, their son wrestles at Michigan now. They're big wrestling fans, but unfortunately they're gonna be out of town. Yeah. Um, I don't, there's always there's always some surprises. Yeah, a few years ago, we had the DJ Steve Aoki uh, grace us with his presence. Um, I don't know if you were there when uh, um, uh, Vision Quest, uh, Modine, and Frank Jasper, whose shoot were there. Um, I know. Yeah, those were ones I, was, I wasn't here at that time. So 
like that and Coleman Scott. I mean, those are like the, the, those are some legendary um, um, moments uh, in the beef of streets history. Dana White showed up to one of them I was at. Uh, Ray Lewis has been to one. I interviewed Dana White, interviewed um, obviously Neil deGrasse Tyson. That was cool because he was like, why do you want to interview me about wrestling? And I was like, because you wrestled and you're here at this event. And he was so fired up. And that event, the way that event ended, Burroughs tech fall the guy with like two seconds left. He like double leg this Russian dude to his back. Um, that was like, it was such an exclamation point on the event. And everybody like crowded in. It was like awesome, dude. They yeah. were jumping the barricade. It was like so cool. Such a just like an awesome moment, how that ended. And then Neil deGrasse Tyson was more fired. He was more fired up than I was. <laughs> and I'm, dude, I get geeked out about wrestling. This guy was like, oh, it was amazing. He was so descriptive. And he loves wrestling. Like hearing him talk about it, it's, it's, yeah, he's into it. The dude is into it and he, and he pays attention to it. So that was cool. I really <laughs> liked that. And the guy was, he was, we talked for like 20 minutes, a half an hour, just like chopped it up and, People are coming by getting pictures with him. And I think he had his son with him or nephew or whoever he had with him. He had a kid with him. And he was just talking shop, man. He was cool, though. Uh, super down-to-earth guy, though. But I liked it. That's what I like about when I get to come to the event. You know, obviously, Mike Novogratz is usually, you know, he's – this is he, he loves this, right? This is his deal, right? Mm -hmm. So, Novogratz, obviously, he usually has got someone that he is – rubbing elbows with right um oh i was also in sports illustrated at this event sitting next to rob cole interviewing rob cole and it was it appeared on a two-page uh in sports illustrated yeah yeah i gotta show it to you i'm sitting right next to rob cole and uh it's actually and what's funny about it is it's the johnny manzel cleveland browns issue of the <laughs> no way it has, it's a two page, like a, like a uh, panorama, two page panorama of the whole thing with the big, obviously with Times Square in the background and all the advertisement and then the crowd around the mat. It's, it's really cool, man. But yeah, it's plain as day. It's definitely me talking to Rob Cole. <laughs> so I, yeah, man, this is a special event to me. You can obviously tell I'm pretty nostalgic about coming to New York city and um, I love it. Oh, I walked, I was there with Mark Bader once and we stayed in Brooklyn with Mike Torriero. You know, Mike, <laughs> you know, Mike, Mike's my boy. Mike gets after it on Twitter. I don't know if you, I don't know if you paid oh, attention. Yeah. I've, it's I've after heard. maybe a little too hard, but I like that. Um, he was supposed to be a guest here on my show and um, <clears> my <throat> internet kept going out. And I was like, dude, I, I, and they said, they set a tent up next to my internet terminal half mile down the road really there might be there's like a technician who must live in it and every time <laughs> they camp so you, out next to it dude it's so bad we live in so did you stay with did you stay with him in brooklyn yeah so i you stayed in my brooklyn. nephew ian with my nephew ian miller bader mark bader and myself i walked out of his door and i walked into a massive pothole <laughs> and destroyed my ankle right like i fell <laughs> Uh, my nephew's like picking me up. He's like, are you okay? Well, the, there was a cab driver who like slammed down his brakes and he got out and he was trying to get me into his cab. And I was like, at that point I went full like uh country bumpkin. Like I ain't getting in your cab, dude. <laughs> I ain't getting in your cab <laughs> and you take hey, me somewhere and charge me. The problem. The guy's trying to help you. He's offering you support. Do you think he's after your wallet, man? Listen, I think the dude was actually being genuinely trying to help yeah. me. His English wasn't great. So I was like, hey, man, I'm good. I ain't getting in your cab. <laughs> but, like, so Torriero, I don't know if Mike saw it, but Bader and my nephew Ian, dude, I thought I broke my ankle. So we went, and Torriero gets us on the subway because he only lived a couple stops for, in Brooklyn to the – I don't know if we had to change lines because I can't – because, you know, it's like he got this country bumpkin mind, and you go to New York City, and it's like the movies. Oh, what's that? And the dude picks your pocket, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody picks your pocket, by the way. I just keep saying that, but like just so many iconic moments, man. It's such a special event to me. And, and on top of it, the organization beat the streets is about helping kids. 
and that's my deal. I'm a public school teacher. So, I mean, why not? I mean, there's what's not to love, right? What's not to love? I don't know. You tell me what's not to love besides almost breaking your ankle. And then Tori Arrow kept wanting to wrestle my nephew, Ian. And I was like, hey, dude, I think my nephew's going to murder you. So I don't want, I'm good. But he's like, oh, I can, I can, I can roll. And I was like, we wrestled it in his backyard. He's in his backyard. I, I can't remember if there was like turf back there, but. Yeah, yeah a was, really cool he, place. He, he wouldn't be the only one that he had wrestled in his backyard. Yeah, he like wanted to wrestle. And I'm like, dude, this, he'll strap you up, man. And he's like, <laughs> no, no, I can roll. And I was like, all right. And then Ian was like, oh, I don't, I'm good, man. I don't want to do it. He was going to hit him with like a running inside trip or some crazy madness or a flying Bondini. And I was like, no, dude, no matter how drunk this guy gets or whatever we end up doing, just we're good. We're good. Don't wrestle this guy. I don't want to, I don't want to be out in that guy's cab sleeping tonight, but it's just like so many cool things. So many awesome memories about this event and coming to the event and just being in New York city, man, it doesn't get much better. Right. Well, I'm pumped. I'm super pumped that you're coming, buddy. I'm, I'm fired up. Really um, a couple more questions for you because we're at four yeah. minutes and 30 seconds, okay? Far away. I love talking about the rich wrestling tradition of the great state of Florida. You are a part of that. <laughs> Hold on. Stop. I can't tell if you're serious or not. Stop. Scotty sent us. <clears throat> Scotty sent us, Mike, Mike Schick, Bono, Bono, Lee Pritz, yourself, um, how good were all the Brandon teams? How good were all the Brandon? We got to give, we're going to give Franklin Gomez to Brandon, even though he's not, but we're, he wrestled at Brandon technically, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Ray Lewis, Ray Lewis is the state champ in the state of Florida. Florida's had some absolute freaks though, Right. You and Pritz were the same year, right? How many? Yeah, I remember. Out? I remember our senior year. I can't. Does have this like memory of um, us hanging out? Like I'd heard of him, but I didn't. I don't know. I just remember. I feel like I met him for the first time at the state tournament. But then years later, uh, we were working when he was at Missouri. We'd go back. Brian Brian Smith was from Florida, and. Um, it was it was great. It was like you know, Bono and, and I worked the camp. Pritz worked the camp. Brian Smith, um, Brian Smith's brother was a good high school wrestler. Um, I think who else? Oh, uh, Bart Horton. You know Bart? Big Bart Horton fan. Like Bart Bart a lot. Bart's a good dude. I um I went out to Air yeah. Force. I went out to Air Force and him and Kilgore were doing meathead lifts together. <clears throat> they were having a blast. They were, they were bros. He's like the uh, martial arts instructor out at the air force academy now did you know that I, it's been a, uh, i don't know that i did know that um, yeah, bart's I, a good dude. now that you say that though i remember him teaching a class on that yeah. yeah bart's a good dude he took me into the martial arts rooms they were cool he didn't beat me up or anything so that was cool i appreciate like Florida, it florida's got some wrestling history no i wasn't being i'm saying like there's a guy the all-time Gardner, greatest winch was a national champ at uh, ohio university there, Dwight Gardner's a Florida guy. You're right. 1998, my friend. He beat Hardell Moore, I believe. Yeah. Hey, I know things. There's things up here, I, I promise you. Okay. You had a super crazy journey, though. You've made I, – I said the, the Columbia, <laughs> Cal Poly, beat the streets. There's been multiple coast-to-coast -coast moves that I totally left out. Right? Uh, so it went Clemson. So or let, well, I was born in New York, um, but when I was eight, moved to Florida. Um, okay. went to Clemson was there three years, ninety two to ninety five. Then went to Fresno State, ninety five to ninety seven. I did a hot minute, just shy of a year, uh, at UC Davis, and then went to the University of Virginia for two years. Uh, so that took me to two thousand. Two thousand went to Columbia. There's more. There's actually more coast to coast than I even anticipated was trying to lead you into. So think about this. New York. I'm just doing this real quick off the top of my head. I'll do the geography. We're going to go east coast over here. And it might be backwards for you. We're going to go west coast over here because it's left for me. Got it? Born in New York, Florida, Florida State champ, Clemson. 
transfer out. This is the West Coast out here to Fresno State, which is in California, but it's in the Central Valley. But it's it's you're two hours from the ocean in Fresno, right? Two and a half. Two 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 and a half. Yeah. Yeah, two and a half. That's that's the West Coast, Pacific Coast. Okay. Then you move back to and go to – well, you're at UC Davis from uh, Fresno. UC Davis, just yeah, north. You're, you're, okay, so you're a D1 All-American at Fresno State, right? Mm-hmm. Seventh, if people are wondering. Colette won the weight. You move back from UC Davis to UVA. Then you get the head coaching job at Columbia. Columbia, Cal Poly, Cal Poly. Back to the New York City Beat the Streets, executive director. Did I get it all? You got it. Dude, that's a lot of moving. Oh, oh, you got a little overtime for me? Got a little overtime? Yeah, of course okay. I got overtime. Okay. Well, yeah, I can tell, dude. You look jacked. It looks like you're still training college. Are you still are you are you wrestling? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you working out every day? I, I just buy, I just buy really small shirts. Fred Listen. Cliff King. Cliff King got this for me. Uh we got some fresh apparel. Okay. Uh, game. And then before it's over, you got to let me pitch our text to give platform and our website and all that. I don't care. You pitch away. Pitch away. But listen, my shirts are not smaller. They're the same size. I've just grown bigger. Dude, two, <laughs> hey, 255 pounds. I got to get down, dude. I got to get down to that fighting weight again. But I gotta do. I gotta lose twenty pounds, dude. Hey man, we'll, run, we'll run some stairs while you're here. There's I mean, if you wanted me to be dead, I guess we can. I mean, or do like ten stairs and be like, oh, I'm tired. <coughs> uh, you know what though? I've been getting my like. Uh, you know, you always get the ten thousand steps a day, which isn't hard. I've been getting like fifteen and twenty thousand step days lately, and it's been super hot. So I've lost like eight or ten pounds a day. But you know, you you hydrate, you get you get you get the fluids back in you, right? But, but you've had such an interesting journey, right? All these coast-to-coast things, right? And you've always been super successful no matter what you're doing, right? What is this like compared to being a head coach, an assistant coach, all these other things, you know, an athlete, obviously. What is this like? Is this more office work? What is being an executive director like? How many people do you oversee and how much is it, is it as stressful as being a coach because you got to win? You got to raise money being a coach. You got to deal with the alumni. You got to do all that. How much different is this job at Beat the Streets from being a D1 head coach? It's uh, in some ways, in some ways, it's there are certain things that are easier, and a lot of ways, there are certain things that are harder. Um, don't feel the same level of pressure that when every weekend you compete as a coach, uh, you know, you're, you're representing the program and the university and you want to do your best. Um, so you don't have that uh, week in, week out. We're competing. Um, but as far as like you have a small select group of kids that you're bringing to a tournament. And um, uh, for us, like right now where I am, this is preparation for the NCA. So there's, there's certainly pressure. Um, we want it to go very well. So we you know, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to make sure we're dotting our I's and crosses our T's for just the myriad of just so many different things going on with an event like this. Um, coaching is incredibly hard. Um, I love recruiting. I really did. I enjoyed that process. Um, I enjoy, um, you know, working with alumni and fundraising. Everything like that was something I did enjoy too, um, but uh, what comes along with it is, um, you know, I when I was in New York, I would I love recruiting kids from the West Coast, and you know, those calls would leave in you know eleven, twelve at night sometimes, and, and taking into effect uh, a six a.m. practice, I mean, it's it's an intense commitment. Um, so for college coaches, uh, especially in our sport, and just I would always explain to people when you're coaching college wrestling, the hard part, you're competing against other college wrestlers, <laughs> like other, other dudes that were incredibly successful, that are incredibly driven and are, that are, are just, you, you just don't want to be outworked. And so that expectation, that pressure that you, you know, that standard you set for yourself um, leads itself to a, a, just a, a very committed lifestyle 
and and to be there for your student athletes you know you're they're they're an extended family and so i have nothing but respect for people who coach and um i had an incredible journey and just so grateful for all the gifts i had as a result of you know somebody taking a chance on me to become a head coach initially at, at columbia and that opportunity to move to new york and um and then just the way it led to the next opportunity the next opportunity and um coming to beat the streets was just another wonderful gift um working with a, a board of directors to learn from and but also just working with our student athletes and and realizing um you don't know what you have until you meet people who don't have and and getting a sense of our our high school coaches uh, their the resources or lack thereof and and how they they still come back day and season after season after season for their kids and you know it's it's tough they're wearing uniforms that are five six years old they're 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 trying to compete and they're as passionate uh as as the coaches are at the blair academy but they're getting kids who are coming out for the first time that are in 10th grade it's like god if we could get that kid in like sixth grade and work and shape and mold that person. Um, and there's just so many obstacles that our student athletes encounter that it's it's just simply harder. And, and so we try and use that as uh, fuel for the fire to 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 feed that that um, you know that hunger for success that they have. And so yeah, just to 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 be here now i've been here over six years now i've learned so much um i I'd never worked with the board of directors before i never worked at a nonprofit organization before i you know in terms of like measuring success as a college coach um i i was you know i, I wasn't studying stats like okay we have this many takedowns this year versus last year and i just knew hey we we beat Penn last year. We beat Cal State Bakersfield. We got to make sure we beat them again. Or we sent four guys to the NCA. Or we had one All American. You know, you're a nonprofit. You, you, it's it's a little bit harder to to measure your impact. You need to. Our kids are filling out these surveys. You know, here's how they answer the survey before they came to beat the streets or at the start of the season. Here's what it is after. Here's what they're doing. Um, here's how many kids are going to college. Here's how many are wrestling in college. Um, how many hours are we working with them? How many boys? How many girls? How many people of color? How many people at the poverty level? Um, um, what percentage of our student athletes are, are entering college? Or what percentage of our kids in the middle school are now matriculating onto a high school team? So it really, I really learned that was a big um, learning curve for me and something to really take. Like, it's not just wins and losses. You got to really like, really quantify things and and you can find where you're doing well and find where you're not doing well so but anyways long-winded answer Dude, uh, that's those things you just said though above the poverty line people of color a lot of these things that a lot of organizations don't take account of right and who's 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 going into the workforce who's going on to a two-year college who's going on to a four-year college right who's graduating from college who's graduating from the two-year school who's going to the technical school who's going into the trades right like i don't think people really think about all the factors and all the benchmarks you have to hit man that is that's wild that that like now people oh, that guy's got the job when you put it to them like that, they might want to rethink that you got the job because there's a lot of things, a lot of factors, a lot of ins and a lot of outs that, and a lot of benchmarks you got to hit that I don't think people get. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Last thing. Last thing I got for you besides, before I let you plug. Your wife ran Ivy League track, right? Yeah. Well, she ran track for Columbia, right? Mm -hmm. All right. What'd she run? She's a sprinter. 400 800 400 medley i believe oh my nephew's running the state track meet in the 400 this week so i'm pumped i'm super pumped so i'll be at the state track meet friday but wife was uh can the d1 track i you, you have to, i don't i'm ignorant here you have to explain can they qualify like d1 wrestling can can they qualify for the ncad one 
just like everybody else, like like what wrestling does because their footballs yeah. can't go to the postseason. Ivy League football can't go to the postseason. Did your wife ever make the NCAAs? No, she was all Ivy though. All um, Ivy, but you get my point. Sometimes yeah. the Ivy doesn't let them do postseason because the Ivy is focused on the academics. Yeah, no, they could qualify. They had a good their their track and cross country team were, were really good. So. Your wife was a D1 track athlete. You were a D1 All American in wrestling. How I'm, are I'm your, scared where this is going. I don't know. How just, are your kids as athletes? Um, Too young to tell. Well, you know, I think I'm just starting to uh, get it. My son Jack is he's 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 going to be five next month. He's doing T ball, and I was explaining to everybody. He. Uh, we just haven't done a whole, I mean, he's only four, but I, yeah. I bring him to jiu-jitsu. I brought him to wrestling. He's, he's not ready for wrestling like day in, day out. We were bringing him to a club. I couldn't believe how good these like six, seven-year-olds were. Was, That's unreal, isn't it? It's like mind-blowing because I got a, a six and a four-year-old and I'm kind of like, yeah, I'll go wrestle it. once a week. I couldn't help but feel I'm like, am I messing them up? Am I not getting them? Do I need to go harder? <laughs> no, like, no, <laughs> no, I'm like, helping right. you out. No, you're not. Oh, and I know that's the answer. I've seen no. too many people go the wrong way, but yeah. it's just been difficult to tell. So, uh, you know, watching the, just the skill to learn how to throw a baseball, how to push off your back foot and step your, and so the coach, I mean, just God bless coaches. Like just pick anybody who coaches any sport, any age, you just can't have but mad respect for them. I was trying to like, I could already tell if Jack does want to wrestle, I don't think he's going to want me to be his coach. He doesn't want any feedback from me. So I was trying to show him how to throw the ball properly and didn't really have a lot of time for me. And then the coach was like, Hey Jack, I was needing to tell you, I was thinking about you and how you can improve your, 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 your throw. And he's like, I want you to bring your arms up like an airplane. Can you do that? And sure enough, Jack's arms go up like an airplane. He's like, and I want you to face this way, even though you're stepping that way. And the plane is going to lean back. Your legs are going to come up. And then it's, you're going to throw them. And I was just like, how amazing, how creative was that? And the kid is the night, the, the coach is the nicest guy. So anyways, he's starting to like slow, like, hey, I think he could be okay. But it's, it's hard to tell. So yeah. last week. One of the coach's sons, I mean, he's wailing him off the tee. And I see one going right for Jack's face. And I'm like, oh. So he caught it on his face. And I was telling everybody how he caught his first fly ball, but it was on his cheek. <laughs> <laughs> he's okay, though. So the, the, the jury's out, you know. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Third, and then you have a daughter, right? I have a daughter. And oh. honestly, personality-wise, you know, I think for the for the casual observer, she will be the wrestler. She is a firecracker and uh, very intense. Okay. Uh, hey, that that was a good answer. I like that. That's a, that is an acceptable answer. <laughs> I'm not even going to press you anymore on that because I think that's a good answer. You just yeah, you just don't know they're so young, right? Yeah, it's young. They're young. But okay, before we take off here tonight, first. What else do you got for me? Here's your time to shine, sir. Uh, we got some cool, uh, we're going to have some great merchandise. Uh, as I mentioned, Cliff Keen is our sponsor. They, we got some really cool stuff. Um, there's going to be some raffle items. Jeff Riccio is our digital graphics designer who made some posters. We're going to have the athletes sign some posters. Um, we're going to raffle off some tickets for the uh, next year's benefit. Um, we're going to raffle off a singlet that all the, that, uh, some of the athletes are going to sign. Um, we, uh, I was mentioning AJ Ferrari is going to be there in a, uh, like signature and photo, uh, line for people as they enter the arena for the evening. Mr. Fast Twitch. Mr. Fast Twitch. Mr. Fast Twitch. Okay. Um, um, what else? Oh, um, wait, there was one other thing I was going to mention. Your website. So, yeah, so all of our information on the benefit can be found on our website, btsny.org. If anyone would like to donate, we have a text to give donate. It's You just text final X to 44321. And um, 
hey, every all this all this this event is is to support the 2,500 student athletes we work with, boys and girls, um, middle school, high school, all five boroughs. Um, so your your support means a lot, and I appreciate you having me on, big man. All right. Well, I I, I appreciate you giving a plug to. Uh... Cliff Keen, you know, they're from Ann Arbor. My wife's from Ann Arbor. I won't hold it against either one of the, the, that, that, you know, that uh, business or my wife. Uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan's a beautiful place. But go to www.barbarianapparel.com. Check out what they got going on. You can get, uh, they got these, uh, these quarter zips, right? I mean, really cool. I like the stuff you got in the background. Yeah. Listen, these bags are sweet. These are really cool bags. He, uh, we hook kids up when they win tournaments, like the league that um, my nephews are in, when you win it, you get one of those bags. Um, so that's what they do with the champs and then a couple of the big tournaments in Ohio. But check out WWE. Angelo Hancock is, is, is Angelo right. Hancock's Barbarian Apparel. But check out uh, www.barbarianapparel.com. Brendan Buckley, Executive Director of New York City Beat the Streets. Stick around. I'll talk to you afterwards here. Thanks for the time tonight, man. Thanks a lot, Zeb.